I think we are live. All right. Yes, let me check if we are live. And uh, yes, we are live. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool. So uh, hello, everybody. Um, today is a special day. This is our first uh, live video and uh, we want to help you to make videos from home, from your environment. So I have today a special guest, uh, Casey and uh, <laughs> thank you. I tried to pronounce it correctly. And uh, um, he is an, an entrepreneur and uh, he is not afraid to make videos and uh, share his knowledge and uh, grow his business with his tools. So, uh, uh, can you help us and start this discussion? And uh, yeah, let's help entrepreneurs to sure. not be yeah. afraid to make these videos. <laughs> That's right. You know, um, I'm also a counselor, and then I have a very small niche of business that I operate in um, because I don't know if you've heard the expression or if it's popular where you're from. Uh, the riches are in the niches. Uh, oh. So, if you, so the, the small, you know, so the more you specialize that you can get, right? Yes. Uh, because we do live in this uh, World Wide Web, um, and everybody is accessible. And so I don't need to be able to reach everybody. I need a very small percentage of the world's population to be interested in what I have to offer. And so I, if I if I niche down, right? And mm -hmm. it's kind of funny because the smaller your target audience the more forgiving that they are that you don't have all the bells and whistles and the polished video and and you know all that because you know they realize they're a small group if i was just speaking to business people about setting goals mm -hmm. all business people everybody everywhere you know then they're going to, there's some incredible products out there on how to do that and so hey. they're going to want that to be yes have high expectation that's right that's right and so uh, I would encourage you to find your specific people, right? Your specific audience that you're you're trying to go for, and make sure that they are um, uh, your people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you really don't have to worry too much about video quality. Instead, what I would recommend that you do is is one is just get started. Don't don't wait. Don't wait for anything. If you uh, if you go and watch any of my videos, they're mostly lives because mm -hmm. people are very forgiving about lives. They know that stuff happens, <laughs> right? Yes. Like today, I know that there's going to be some stuff happen today because my grandson is here and my wife's here and all four children are here. And so, yeah. <laughs> so if something will happen, it will be amazing. If not, yeah, we'll yeah. be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Something will happen. My wife's in the uh, kitchen now and she's making bread with an electric mixer. And so it's probably going to make some noise here in a second. And part of that is really just just life happens. So the mm -hmm. you know one is is know your people, niche down. Um, they're very forgiving, particularly of live videos. If you if you researched me and looked at my YouTube channel or anything, you'll see some very uh, videos just like this that are mm -hmm. that are not perfect. the The first thing when you can afford it that I'd recommend that you do is is buy a good mic uh, because sound is more important than video. Mm -hmm. People are, are used to, as long as they can hear you, and as long as they can understand what you're saying, um, they're very forgiving, right? And think about like um, uh, what's real popular right now, like on TikTok, uh, Instagram, Snapshot, you know, where, where they have all these filters. Facebook's even even has it. So it distorts the screen, makes it look like mm -hmm. an old TV screen or static going across and stuff, you know. So we, we do that on purpose to distort or um, you know alter the video and make it less quality but that audio is unforgivable if you if you if you, if you can't hear what somebody's saying they're going to turn it off <laughs> and, yes and with tools they are have available i think uh, these mics may be enough like from the headphones can improve the quality can yeah. i yeah beginning yeah yeah very very good so so honestly just get started you know, with it, um, what the people that you're working with, Nikolai, what are what are they doing? What are they um, wanting to do with their business and use video for? We have we have small businesses. They offer services for the community, and right now they are shut down most of them. And uh, 
we are thinking what to do right now because they cannot run the business and uh, one of the ways uh, they told me uh, before this happened is I don't have time for doing video. I didn't have uh, <laughs> this and this. Right now you have a time and you <laughs> now have... Now you got the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there, yeah, there's. There, I think there's a lot of things. I th uh, you know, there's some really terrible things going on. If you're watching this video years from now, we'll remind you that we're in the COVID crisis, um, soon to be the co COVID economic you know, crisis, mm -hmm. because the, as you know, the projections of us recovering from this start at 18 months and probably longer. Yes. before our economy you know worldwide gets back uh, to where it was but I think that there's something else going on that there's I, I feel very deeply for the people that have lost a loved one or people that are sick or people that are in pain or people that have lost their job and people that are scared you know right now mm -hmm. and so I don't mean to make light of that at all but within anything that happens there's an opportunity and as entrepreneurs which is the market that we're talking to right now uh, yes. we're, our job is to solve problems for our customer, and then we get paid for that. So very simply, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of problems are going on in your community or however you do business, right? So if you do business um, with people far away over the Internet, you know, what kind of problems are they having? If you do business with people nearby in your town, what kind of problems are they having that you can help, you know, give a solution towards? Mm -hmm. And there's just really some creative things going on in the world today. Uh, you know, I, I recently read about... Um, you know, the, uh, here in America, where I live, you know, there's all these gym memberships. Yes. And so people can't go to the gym, you know, right now. Mm -hmm. And so the gym has, has literally, where I go to, probably has 200, um, you know, those stationary bikes and elliptical machines and, you know, you know all mm -hmm. that stuff, you know, just to work out on. And so they're renting it out. They've become rental companies. Mm -hmm. And so they're using their employees to, you know, get a stationary bike and drive it to somebody's house, you know, and then they rent it by the month. And the person is paying more for the equipment rental than they were paying for the gym membership. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they are creative. Uh, I hope, um, yeah, more entrepreneurs will see new, new creative things, how to run the business. That's right. That's right. So we really have to just move what we're offering to in-home services. And there's there's so much that is, uh, you know, I, one thing I hear people now that we've been doing this for a month is their haircut is 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 worn off and they're ready to get a haircut. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing more and more people like, what do I do? What do I you know, how do I get a haircut? Uh, the I'm super blessed in that I don't have any hair. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you see my hair, I, I need to cut it. <laughs> but, you know, but other people are scrambling for what they're doing. And mm -hmm. then I noticed I got a, an email from uh, Wish.com that I bought a lot of stuff on. And it said, you know, haircuts at home, you know, mm -hmm. you, you know, they want to sell you a razor. So, you know, it'll take a month and a half to get to your house. But, <laughs> but yes. you know, it's just people are finding that, you know, what, it, what is the problems that people are experiencing today? Mm -hmm. And how can your business pivot or change to be able to meet those needs? Mm -hmm. And you might have to do some things differently. You'll definitely have to do some things differently mm -hmm. than you've done before in your business. Most of entrepreneurs are afraid of recording videos like, oh, I don't have a um, professional camera. I don't know what to speak. I don't know uh, um, if this is background is good background, if noise of children and so on. Um, how you're suggesting uh, to deal with it? Well, I think right now is the perfect opportunity because every because because a an imperfect video is very forgivable right now, right? Why? So like, uh, yeah, because like, look at like um, I don't know if you watch um like late night um uh, the comedian shows, but like Jimmy Kimball. Um, some some great you know that that can't go to the studio mm -hmm. and record their you know every night uh, TV show mm -hmm. are now doing it from home. So and they're in, here's it, these. Go ahead. Uh, we don't uh, know Americans uh, TV shows. I know what you are yeah. talking, but let okay. give some context for European part. Like this is yeah. very popular show. Millions are watching, and he is filming his, his, his self from. 
from home on his iPhone and he's doing a terrible job because <laughs> so, this yeah. person has never, they haven't been on the other side. They don't know about lighting. They don't know that that's all done for them when they get in the studio. Right. Yeah. And so they have their, their, their wife, you know, that's, that's over there with the phone. I'm like, you know, put it in a stationary, <laughs> quit holding it. So you're jiggling <laughs> and it's going to millions of people. <laughs> the people are like, I'd rather have this than nothing. <laughs> yes, yes. Cool. So it's a great opportunity for you to, um, under the best circumstances, you, one is you're going to make mistakes. Two is technology is going to mess up, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. We're a little late getting started on this call because I had a problem over here on a technical end, right? Mm -hmm. And Nicola, Nicola and I were trying to figure out what we need to do to be able to uh, you know, get around that problem. And you know, I work with, uh, I've, I've been, I've, I've paid a lot of money to be, you know, part of a membership for growing my business, such as Stu McLaren's Tribe. I paid $2,000 wow. to take that for a 10 week experience, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I've never paid that kind of money for education. It was how to build a membership, right? I just really felt like I was supposed to do that. And it's paid off, it's been a good thing. You know, for me. But even Stu, I mean, we're talking about this. This, I mean, this, two, two, twenty six hundred people paid two thousand dollars to be a part of this program. So he had a five point six million dollar launch, wow. in doing his last last year. This time last year, and so his video quality on his coursework, mm -hmm. right, yes. is really high up. I mean, it is. You can tell there was a lot of people there, a lot of production value. It was mm -hmm. expensive for them to do. But even Stu says that he gets better responses. When he just whips out his camera and goes act out silly, you know, in his pool with his kids, right? <laughs> he has more people like it, more people follow it, more people come into the program mm -hmm. from the less highly polished um, video production. So in some ways, it's kind of just the world that we live in, right? So people like choosing. natural. They like a natural. They like almost like a, a real glimpse. One of the things I think is kind of intriguing. Um, there's a. I don't know if you've uh, followed. A, I know I'm referencing things that's probably not common in Europe. In Europe but the um, the Office TV show, not the European version, but the American version. Mm -hmm. And so the character Jim, his name is John Klinensky. I always say his name wrong, but anyway, he's a popular actor. And so he started the SGN on on. Um, YouTube, which is mm -hmm. um, some good news is what it stands for, because he was just tired. You know, you got all these actors in Hollywood that can't work right now. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what, what can I do? What can I use my my fame to be able to help the world? So I just love his attitude about it. And so he just started doing a little news show and mm -hmm. it's funny and it's spoofy. But he's he's doing some good news, you know, all over the world. And he's doing, you know, just ridiculous things like you'll have a, a, a a, you know, suit and tie on here, and at the end of every episode, he gets up and he it shows that he's just wearing boxer shorts, you know, underneath. <laughs> you know, one time a tutu, he was wearing a tutu just to be ridiculous. But it, you know, and these are low production value, and mm -hmm. people love it. Well, why? Well, everybody likes this guy, right? Mm -hmm. He's one of the most likable actors, you know, in the world, and you're getting to see him in his home. You're mm -hmm. getting to see people in their environment in an imperfect, not polished, you know, set. Um, you're getting to see more a more real version of them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that translates in a much smaller way to us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to smaller local businesses that people actually get to see. I wanted to say about Stu McLaren's thing is that he, um, he would do these daily um, videos at 10 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. at, uh, throughout the entire 10 weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And these things would be, his wife would be coming home, getting groceries, you know, walking behind him. You know, the kids would run up to him. <laughs> He would stop and interact with them. He'd say, hey, you want to say hello, you know, to, to, to the tribe? You know, you want to say hello to Facebook? You know, and they would interact with him and, and stuff. And it was just kind of like that was endearing. It was like being a part of their family. Mm -hmm. And so it, cool. it, 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 it didn't create a distance. It actually brought you closer. Yes. And um, look, uh, People, okay, we uh, people can forgive the environment and they can forgive this, but some of the my friends and some of these people who are following us we are afraid about their speeches like oh i use not so polished speeches maybe not on this extreme like moses 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 yes <laughs> but uh, right. uh, kind of like uh, i will use not appropriate word i will be too bore boring and people will not watch me and i don't will not have the uh, views and so on what you can say about this well, it's very interesting because 
like there's a, I don't know if you studied I'm being a counselor there's these four personality temperaments right mm-hmm. we have different names for them but the old um, I think Socrates wrote it 4,000 years ago as phlegmatic sanguine choleric and melancholy so we're mm-hmm. all these different personalities right yes and so the sanguine is the outgoing one and they're they're very talkative and they 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 love being the center of attention you know they're they're frequently like the senior you know the pastor of a church you know they're they're very comfortable on stage you know mm-hmm. and they always have somebody behind them that's typically a melancholy or a phlegmatic and these are the people that really don't like being in the limelight but yeah, they like but me. they support yeah would be yeah see and, and me too <laughs> right so i am least of all sanguine like that but I've had to learn, it's been hard, but just to be able to talk to you right now without, you know, freezing or stuttering or whatever, that, that's hard for my personality to do that. Mm-hmm. So how did, how do I do it? I'm not good, but I mean, how do I do it? Be- how have I done better? You know, practice, just putting mm-hmm. yourself out there, just facing your fear mm-hmm. of just going, you know, the, and facing that perfectionism, this idea that everything has to be perfect. No, you know, except, you know, if you're listening to my words right now, the one thing that I want to tell you, you know, the the, the secret here is, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, yeah, is, is you're never going to be perfect. And so if you're never going to be perfect and you're in, so for the rest of your life, you're never going to have a perfect video, right? Mm -hmm. You're never going to do that. Then just accept it now. And so Mm -hmm. when stuff happens, uh, it's just, Okay, <laughs> keep, keep, keep rolling. I don't have a goal of being perfect. You know, that's mm-hmm. ridiculous. But there's, you know, back to, so you got your personality. Some of us are more comfortable on camera than other people are. And then you'll see this in the style, you know, uh, like you, Nikolai, I follow a lot of gurus, you know, on, on, on the internet. I'll try to learn a lot. I'm always, you know, listening to some webinar, you know. Um, my family's used to me walking around the house with earbuds in, <laughs> listening to, you know, or I'm working in my shop, you know, I'm an artist. And so I, you know, I've got, I've got it blasting, you know, out mm-hmm. there some, not, not music, but, you know, some, some webinar because I'm trying to learn all the time. And that helps you a lot is just getting exposed and watching other people do mm-hmm. what you want to do. That helps a lot. But one, one thing that uh, has not happened yet is I have not ha- attended, and I probably attended, I, I would say over a thousand, you know, webinars, oh. right? Probably easily, you know, over the years. And there's not been a perfect one yet. There's not mm-hmm. been one that they didn't have a tech tech issue, where they didn't have a sound issue, where you know, where where they didn't, you know, lose connection, and they're just dead there for a minute. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, this stuff happens. And so the world is ready for that, and they're very forgiving of that mm-hmm. happening. Then there's kind of two different styles in which to present. And some of those are, you know, I got, being least of all that kind of outgoing person, I like someone to be concise. I mm-hmm. like someone to give me, they may not be flamboyant, they may not be really excited, you know, or exciting mm-hmm. to watch. But these people are the ones that I actually pay money to or, you know, I, I, I you know, like I, I saw your Skillshare, you know, thing. And I liked your, that's how we met, you know, as I, I saw your, yours on Skillshare. Yes. You give, you know, not a whole lot of fluff, not a whole lot of, um, you know, just filler, you know, talking, talking, talking stuff. No, it was more concise information. Give, give me that. That's how I like to learn. Mm-hmm. That's how I have a tendency to teach too when I'm not just going offhand like I am right now. Cool. But there's other people, and, and I know you've attended them there's before too, is that they, they, you know, the average time that I do uh, a video, a long one is 30 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. And they, their shortest one is 90 minutes, right? I follow, um, uh, what's his name, Lewis Howe, and, and his, his always are two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. Which, which are you know he does a teaching and then he does kind of an interview show afterwards where he pulls in and gives people advice you know and he's just a talker right now i like him and his content's good but some of these that are more salesy they're just kind of selling 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 mm-hmm. for ever i turn them off you know because they, they turn me off right it's just kind of too yes. much talking so whatever your style is is great for you if you're a talker then talk you know that's appealing mm-hmm. to a lot of people it doesn't appeal to me but it appeals to a lot of people and if you're more you know of an introvert typically and you methodically plan out you know what you want to say what you want to do right then that's going to appeal to a different market too that actually helps you find your people mm-hmm. cool so right now i see some of uh my friends are online and uh, follow uh, so guys if uh, you have some questions you can ask uh, here on live we'll answer them so galus hi uh andrei uh, margareta alexandra 
Hey, uh, guys, e e feel free to give some uh, some questions. We would like to answer them. Um, will be a challenge for us also <laughs> to see if we can That's answer right. them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, so we wait. Um, but uh, uh, until um, they will write a question, I hope they will write. Uh, a question for you. So basically an entrepreneur is he didn't make any videos at all so this is very first time he will make a video with his phone uh, and uh, what what can he start to make and move this yeah. uh, like to move forward yeah what is well, right steps now, we I prefer to do videos on my phone because my laptop, you know, is not very good. This is not a, a super great quality. And so, you, you know, your, your, your phone does much better typically, you know, and so it's a good camera. If you have an external camera, then that's great. Mm -hmm. I was right. I mean, I was like, re I was like on Amazon to purchase an external camera right before COVID hit. And I'm, I'm hitting myself because I could have bought one for $150 that's selling for 700 right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, oh. but this, and then, you know, some, Something, you know, to hold your camera is really, really good, you know, so that it's not moving around, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know that I, I finally got a, my, a Skillshare um, course finally approved. It kind of got, got approved yesterday because they made me retape all of my um, videos that I did while I was holding my camera. And mm -hmm. I was doing that on purpose because I was walking through a garden, you know, I was yes. showing these things. So I, I intended to do that, but they would not accept it. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I had to do, you know, I had to go retape them, you know, on a, you know, something that holds it in a stationary, you know, way like that. But if you don't have something like that, then just prop up your phone, you know, find a way to prop it up and then, you know, just keep it stay still so that you can start doing that. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're pretty good. You know, the camera, the phones today have are much better quality than the highly professional stuff of just five or 10 years ago. So mm -hmm. you're, you're producing some really good stuff with your phone. If you can uh, add an external mic or a lapel mic uh, that that you know works for you, they can be as inexpensive as like fifteen dollars. I don't know what that translates. Um, yeah. You know, but uh, it's again focus more on your sound, um, and then just make sh make sure that you're. Um, I always like to have a plan. Would you like to know how I lay out my my how I do things yes. when I'm doing a recording? Yes. I do my 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 screen on my laptop, and I actually mm -hmm. split it into three different screens that I can move around. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of them is going to be the software that I use when I'm recording, which is Streamyard. Um, Streamyard is has a free level that I used for about a year in my membership group, and mm -hmm. so it would it would take it and it would pump it in live into my Facebook group where my paying members, you know, the only people in the, that group were paying me, you know, monthly mm -hmm. to be a part of that group. Then, you know, from the Facebook group, I could download it and then um, uh, repurpose it and use it in other ways, which I have done. Um, but anyway, so I've got in, in those three windows, I've got one which is the just showing me my StreamYard dashboard, right? Mm -hmm. yes. The other one is going to be my screen share, right? I'll come back to that one. And the other one is my notes. I like to fully type out my notes and for a couple reasons. One is it keeps me on track. Mm -hmm. um, Two is is that if I just use bullet points, sometimes I'll blank on what that means. And so if it's fully written out, I can just switch over to reading and be able to complete my thought mm -hmm. as opposed to go, why did I write that? <laughs> that, <laughs> that doesn't make sense, right? But I'll, but I'll bold those areas. So in some ways I'm creating on mm -hmm. my long written out, you know, like so usually my notes for a video, a uh, half hour video will be 10 pages long. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'll bold those areas or make them colors so that I can just try to look, make eye contact, you know, with the camera and then, you know, talk, try to try to talk naturally. Mm -hmm. Then look at the bolded part, you know, that tells me the next thing. Those same things that are bolded typically in that middle one uh, is what I'm screen sharing. And so that will just be bullet statements. They will not mm -hmm. be the full transcript, if you will. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So. And then I and then I'm careful to I mark this one so whenever I need to um, scroll it up, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm just sharing a Google form. Mm -hmm. My, uh, you know, you've seen my my videos. I'm I'm very low tech with that. I'm not uh, creating slides. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, I, uh, maybe one day I will, but it just <laughs> that would just take so much time mm -hmm. to to do that. So instead, 
I'm just share, screen sharing basically a document, and then you know, on the on the part that I'm sharing with them, it's not the part that I'm reading, but the part I'm sharing with them, I'm I'm just marking so I need to go in my notes. Oh yeah, scroll yes. up some, so I scroll <laughs> up, go back to my notes, and I go back to presenting until I hit another one mm-hmm. of my little red numbers that says go over and scroll up <laughs> some more. And, and this is this is more advanced videos for like to teach to teach something some materials. In uh, their case, if they're trying to promote promote or show their service or products and explain, they can go with shortened videos, like one sure. minute, 30 seconds, sure. five minutes, yeah. what will be best? Yeah, very, very good. Well, it depends on what, you're, what platform you're trying to use. So like um, everybody's always trying to figure out the Facebook algorithm, right? You know, what is Facebook promoting now, right? Mm-hmm. And so for a while there, it was pages. Now it's not. Now they're focused a little bit more on groups, but they seem to be turning their attention to um, they're trying to compete with YouTube. And so mm-hmm. if you want your videos to have some traction, they need to be at least three minutes long. So I'd make that as a goal, that it be mm-hmm. over three minutes. And that uh, and they really like stories. And so mm-hmm. if you can, you know, that's another thing to do is is to try to you know put your stuff in stories because they're they're promoting that. I mm-hmm. I will, I'm do some some kind of A B testing very informally. Mm-hmm. I'll do this on my personal profile. I'll post the same thing in a story and in my timeline. I'll have 12 people that like it on my timeline. I'll have 90 people that like it in my story. Mm-hmm. Right. So they're they're just push pushing that you know they're they're yes. more people are seeing the stories so a really good idea is to whenever you do create a video is to create a link that's within Facebook don't if you link off of Facebook they're not going to give you traction the algorithm kind of shuts it down yes. right so so in your story always always put a story hey I just created this this video about and then put some teaser statement in there you know mm-hmm. whatever it is that you do you know how to vacuum your carpeting more efficiently right whatever yeah. and 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 put it into your story they, they can link off of it and go to your page um, your business page or even a group that your business page has Mm -hmm. and then watch that video and that video again um, if you're gonna go for a short video I would do something just a little over three minutes so that it holds people's attention Mm -hmm. Um, one of the main things whenever I'm teaching to try to get someone's attention is is that you you we used to have um, just a few seconds Mm -hmm. right and now that's that's we have even less time because yep. people are, are clicking off of things much earlier. So if they're like, oh, maybe I'd like that video, they're gonna, you got a you got a few seconds, like three or four seconds. And so you're you're in whatever. You, don't don't um, especially like if you're gonna do a live and stuff. Don't say, oh hey, we're just gonna wait for people to show up, um, yeah. you know, and, and then do your greeting, you know, hey hey Pam, hey Sue. I like what you just did because we were in the middle of the process and then but then that's important to do is to recognize people because like it's an incentive for them to attend live. So mm-hmm. that's the way that you did that is really spot on. But you don't want to have this stall in the beginning where people are like, hmm, no, <laughs> you don't <have> to <laughs> click on. So yes. one thing that I like I like to do is I take my most controversial statement mm-hmm. and I put it at the top. And as soon as my video hits record, I go, I, sh- I shoot them with this controversial statement, right? Mm-hmm. That they're either going to love or they're going to hate. But either way, they're going to listen to the next line. Because then you then- have attention. That's right. That's right. Got the, got their attention, and then I can soften it, or I can, you know, and I'll say things like, "If you aren't doing this, you know, in your fluid art businesses, which is what I teach, then you are losing customers every day, and you're going to fail." <laughs> oh, and they stay and listen. What he will say? <laughs> cool. Cool. Uh, so you got that. You got those three seconds there, right? Mm-hmm. And then then you go on. So yeah, yeah. we have first question, uh, right. and the uh, question is, what uh, was your first video if you remember what was your first video you recorded Ooh. oh man well i think probably for my business uh well let me back up so um probably business related video i used to you know, this is my art behind me and i used to sell mm-hmm. the art right and so i would do some uh, production videos where i would just show people how i made things and I think this was actually before lives. And so I would just record on my phone and then I'd upload it. Mm-hmm. And I found that the people that were that got the most views is whenever I would do an art piece and I'd do installation, um, uh, you know, how I made it. So it might mm-hmm. be this is day one and then I stopped and I let the paint dry. This is mm-hmm. day two, you know, mm-hmm. stop, start. 
stop start and then and then people really followed those they liked them and if i labeled them this is video one you know mm-hmm. of eight you know or, or whatever this is video seven of eight that if they like that one they're going to go find the first one so they're going to cool. see well, how do you do that you know? and <laughs> amazing so that's probably my first my, uh, first videos <laughs> Nice. And uh, I have a question. Uh, what if they will publish a video and they will get very low views? Actually, right now, uh, we'll get four to seven people who are watching right now uh, this live. But uh, they may get even one or two uh, views or yeah, very low views. Should they be disappointed and stop to make videos? No, don't stop. Um, one is, is that you got you're building a relationship, right? And so if people have watched your videos in the past and they like it, then they're going to, when they get that notification on Facebook or whatever platform that you've gone live or that you've loaded a video, Mm -hmm. um, if they like the videos that they've seen weeks ago, months ago from you, they're going to have a tendency to go back and watch that video, right? And so... You, one is your. This is a building thing. It gets it gets more and more and more. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is is that ninety percent of the video watches are done in replay. So mm-hmm. if you got ten people that's watching the video, you can expect over a hundred people to watch it in replay. So there's and more, right? You know. Mm-hmm. So it's it, particularly if and that's without promoting it, right? So you mm-hmm. you promote it, and watch parties are something that I've had a lot of fun with during this time. Um, because I can be, I can have my sound off on my computer. I can start three watch parties in three different tabs and be watching TV with my family, not really paying attention very much. If someone mm-hmm. pops on and says, hi, I say, Hey, how are you doing? You know, <laughs> um, if they have a question about something in the video, I'll answer it, you know, in mm-hmm. there, but I'm not like literally rewatching it. You know, I'm just kind of mm-hmm. monitoring the tabs. Mm-hmm. And so watch parties seem to be one of those things that the Facebook algorithm is really, you know, hot about right now. And so mm-hmm. it, it gives people lots of notice about watch parties and, um, you know, joining you for that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And One thing I'll say about that too yeah. is like um, my you know you know our church you know our churches you know are, are not meeting you know in the building and yes. so my my church is um, doing online so when the when the church starts uh, its thing I I start a uh, I share it right mm-hmm. and I even have shared it to a couple of my groups that were appropriate right. And like Sunday morning, I had um, I had four of my tabs open with the very same church service, and I'm just kind of popping around in there, making comments with people and inviting people. You know, there's that invite button, mm-hmm. so you can find people that you know your friends. And, and I just steady kind of in, you know hitting this thing, inviting, 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 inviting you know, to that. Later, you know, you can do a watch party with those mm-hmm. two. I mm-hmm. think I I don't think I did a watch party of the the church service, but you know, we actually had you know that can really pull a lot of people in. Mm-hmm. And um, one ab- one question uh, also I'm wondering and uh, I'm in- I'm curious what you will say about these uh, people who are commenting uh, not so pleasant comments and uh, how, from what source you should have feedback like from these comments or from other people who are you are trying to ask hey mentor me or help me to uh, and w- what is your attitude about these comments? What's the right attitude to have? Well, first of all, is recognize that um, one is that as we constantly need feedback to grow, yes. right? Um, and so that's one side of it is to, to I try to honestly look at it and go, maybe they're right. What can I do, you know, to improve, right? And I'll comment in the same spirit, you know, later after the video's over, I'll say, you know, um, well, I'm sorry you had a negative experience or, you know, whatever. Um, Maybe you're right. Maybe I do need to stop wearing blue, you know, (laughs) whatever (laughs) that they're saying. Um, um, And then the other side of it is, is that, you know, we got to be careful because if you have, if you are a people, people pleaser, Mm -hmm. right, your personality is to, you know, and, and that you're, if somebody is not pleased with you, that upsets you. You that's a that's an opportunity for emotional growth because you're going to need to grow beyond this because you're going to have to learn to um, you cannot please everybody. So the same thing we talked about earlier as far as acceptance, acceptance that you're never going to have a perfect video. 
right? Mm -hmm. Except yes. that you're going to be pretty rough in the beginning and it's going to get better. Also, except that you're never going to please everyone. And so it's like the, um, when you, when you, I know you do YouTube videos. And so we have, you know, you know, you have a bunch of thumbs up and then you have like three thumbs down, you know, yes. you're like, ah, why did they do that? <laughs> and you, you go and you, you know, you fight, you know, reading the comments and someone's just being, you know, there is just some incredibly negative maybe even evil you know people out there mm -hmm. that seems like they're you know i think they're i i just have pity on them i don't feel like you know mad or anything my immediate response is is this person must be so miserable oh that they want to just tear anything down here i am trying to encourage people or do something and and they're just trying to nitpick and find everything negative you know and and, and they didn't stop with me that day they went to you know a bunch of other videos that day and just you know god bless them they must be the most miserable people on the planet you know uh, yeah <laughs> sad for them we should yeah. pray for them <laughs> that's right so internally we have to be okay with criticism mm -hmm. and we have to recognize where it comes from and you know maybe it's accurate something to learn from and probably it's not you know and it's something to roll with mm -hmm. um i used to go through and and delete all the negative comments i still will if they're like super crazy or something mm -hmm. but um uh but most of the time i i think that it when somebody is watching that in replay right maybe a year later and I've left and even responded to negative criticism. There, I think that they have a feeling of safety that mm -hmm. they can that they can be real with me, and I'll be real back with them. And I also won't, you know, you know, if they, they if they if somebody stabs at me, I'm not going to stab back. And I think that that it's kind of like turning the other cheek, right? You know, we we I, I think that makes the person feel like here's a genuine person. They're you know they're giving me the whole picture here. You know, they're not mm -hmm. giving me some kind of real polished you know or try to appear in the most favorable light. And I think that that that's more real. You know, it's real more human to people. Yes, this is I agree. And uh, guys, uh, Alex. Uh, Kostya, Adrian, if you have some question, you feel feel free to ask here in uh, the comments. Um, we'll answer them. And yeah, I think if they didn't answer, didn't ask anything, we cover most their their interested one. So um, okay, let's um, let's close this live, and uh, maybe All we'll right. do it again for another topic. I know you are uh, working from home. Uh, you said uh, more than three years, or how how many years? Yeah, about two and a half years. Two yeah, and a half years. I, I, yeah, I was fired. I got I got <laughs> fired from my job and <laughs> had to had to do something, and um, and so it was a it was a very interesting. Oh Lord, I'm about to lose power. Here's one of those technical issues. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so we, we may uh, make a, uh, a video about how is to work productively from, from home. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for your time and for sharing uh, your knowledge. I think this is very useful and uh, I hope uh, at least some of these guys will start to make video and will be more encouraged to made, make these videos. Yeah, I think I've been a really perfect example of, you know, that you don't have to be perfect to yes. <laughs> these videos. And so maybe it's encouraged people to go, if he can do it, I can do it. Yes, <laughs> this, <true>. is, <laughs> this is uh, true. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank Thanks. you all. Bye. Yes, we are. I think we are not.